Hello boys, I hope uh, everyone had a nice Christmas and I hope everyone's well. And uh, tonight Lobin's going to bring us a talk later on, but first uh, Sarah's going to do a few games with us. Bye. Tonight we're going to play a game called What Am I? So all you have to do is guess the object or fruit or vegetable or um, I don't know, vehicle from the clues that I give you. So you'll be given four different clues and you all you have to do is write down on a piece of paper what do you think that object is and then I'll go through the answers at the end. So you're going to need to find a piece of paper and a pen for this one and we'll get started. So the first one, um, what am I? I am circular. You can throw me, you can catch me, but you shouldn't throw me near fragile objects because I might break. So what am I? Number two, I live in the water. Sometimes I hold a lot of fish. A captain drives me. And if you don't tie me up, I might float away. Number three, I am in your body, I am red, I give blood oxygen and if you loved somebody you might draw this shape on a Valentine's Day card. Number four, what am I? I could be red or green, I am a healthy snack, you can bite me or slice me or make me into a yummy juice, you might eat me in the morning or for an afternoon snack. Number five, I am in the sky. Sometimes I am there and sometimes I am not. I like to sleep at night. You look, you shouldn't look straight at me. Number six, I am usually green, but in the winter I go brown. I live for a really long time. I am a house for birds. You can climb me or make a house in me. I have four wheels on the outside and one wheel on the inside. You need a key for me to start. You sit in me. and Don't make me go too fast because it could be dangerous. Okay, so the answers then. Uh, number one was a ball. Very well done if you got a ball. Number two was a boat. Number three was a heart. Number four was an apple. Number five was the sun. Number six was a tree. And number seven was a car. Good job if you got all seven of those right. Um, I hope you enjoyed that little game. And now we're going to hear from Robin, who's going to do the story. Well, thanks for that, Sarah. And hello, boys. It's nice to be back. Um, we'd hope to be able to meet in person, but obviously uh, that's not possible at the moment. So we're going to uh, do a few more of these to take take us up to Easter. So we're still continuing. Uh, if you remember before Christmas, we are looking at different jobs in the Bible. Uh, people like Zacchaeus, the tax collector, and David, the shepherd. Uh, so we're going to do that again for the next few weeks. So we're going to look at a job that's not really about nowadays, and that's the job of a prophet. Now, what a prophet was in uh, Old Testament times was they basically, their job was to do what God told them. God would speak directly to them and tell them what to do. So this uh, is a, about a prophet called Elijah and he did lots of interesting things through his life. So we're going to uh, do just about one particular amazing bit of it today. So... The king was called King Ahab and he wasn't a very good king. He didn't uh, follow God. So um, Elijah had told him that it was going to stop raining in Israel uh, because the people were disobedient to him. And after three years, it hadn't rained in three years. Imagine that. It doesn't rain in Port Rush for three minutes sometimes. Um, but after three years, God told Elijah to go and meet uh, Ahab because he was going to send rain soon. So Elijah doing what God wanted, he set off to meet King Ahab. So when King Ahab saw Elijah, King Ahab was very angry. It 
is you the biggest troublemaker in Israel, he fumed. Hold on a minute, Elijah said. I'm not the one here that's causing trouble. You and your father's family have caused all this trouble. You have not obeyed the Lord's commands. You have followed the false god Baal and other idols. So this is what you must do. Summon all of Israel to meet me at Mount Carmel. Bring the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400, 400 prophets of Asherah with you. Baal and Asherah, they were the two sort of false gods uh, that the Israelites uh, were following at the time. So Ahab called all the Israelites and these prophets to Mount Carmel. Elijah then came out and stood before the large crowd. How long will you try to serve both Baal and the Lord? If the Lord is a true God, follow him, he said. But if Baal is a true God, follow him. All the people remained silent. Elijah continued, I am the only prophet of the Lord here. But there are 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah. So bring two bulls. Let the prophets of Baal kill one bull, cut it into pieces and put the meat on the wood. But they are not to set fire to it. Then I will do the same with the other bull and I will put it on the wood. But I will not set fire to it. You prophets of Baal pray to your God and I will pray to the Lord. The God who answers and sets fire to the wood. He is a true God. Everyone agreed that this was a good idea. Elijah told the prophets of Baal to go first. They prayed to Baal from morning until noon. That's a long time. They shouted, Baal, answer us! But there was no sound. No one answered. They danced around the altar they had built. Elijah began to make fun of them. Pray louder, he shouted. Maybe Baal is thinking, or maybe he is busy or travelling. Maybe he is sleeping, so you might have to wake him up. So the prophets prayed louder and cut themselves with swords and spears until their blood flowed to get Baal to listen to them. The afternoon passed and the prophets continued to act wildly. They continued until it was time for the evening sacrifice, but no voice was heard. Baal did not answer and no one paid attention. Then Elijah said to the people, Gather round. Elijah rebuilt the altar of the Lord because it had been torn down because remember they weren't worshipping God anymore he rebuilt it using 12 stones one for each of the 12 tribes of Israel fill four jars with water and pour the water on the meat and on the wood Elijah ordered it was a strange request but they did it Then Elijah said, do it again. So they drenched the altar once more. Elijah ordered, do it a third time. The water ran off the altar and filled the ditch. Now the reason that he did this was because obviously it's hard to light fire to something that's, that's dry. But if you've ever tried to light fire to wet wood or wet coal, it's virtually impossible. So he was trying to make it even harder uh, just to prove that who God really was. It was time for the evening sacrifice. Elijah prayed, Lord, I ask you now to prove that you are the God of Israel and that I am your servant. Show these people that you, Lord, are God. Then they will know that you are bringing them back to you. Suddenly, Fire from the Lord came down on the altar. It 
burn the sacrifice, the wood, the stones and the ground around the altar. It also dried up all the water that was in the ditch. When all the people saw this, they fell down to the ground. They cried, The Lord is God! The Lord is God! Elijah ordered them to capture all the false prophets, take them down to the Kishon Valley and execute them. Then Elijah went to find King Ahab. Now go and eat, a heavy rain is coming. So King Ahab went to eat and drink. Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel with his servant. There he bent down to the ground with his head between his knees and prayed for rain. Then Elijah said to his servant, Go and look towards the sea. Are there any clouds? The servant went and looked. He said, I see nothing. Elijah prayed and told him to go back again. This happened not once, not twice, but six more times. Each time the servant returned to report that there was no rain on the horizon. Go and look a seventh time, Elijah told his servant. The seventh time the servant said, I see a small cloud. It's the size of a man's fist. It's coming from the sea. Elijah told the servant, Go to King Ahab and warn him to get his chariot ready to return home immediately. If he doesn't leave now, the rain will stop him. After a short time, the sky was covered with dark clouds. The wind began to blow, then a heavy rain began to fall. Ahab got in his chariot and started back to Jezreel. The Lord gave his part to Elijah who tightened his clothes around him and ran ahead of King Ahab all the way to Jezreel. It was about the same distance as a marathon run. God had shown his mighty power through the prophet Elijah. Okay, so that last bit, it's, it's unbelievable. Elijah was able to run faster than a chariot. Now, if you've ever seen a horse gallop, and horses can run quite fast, about 30, 40 miles an hour, and Elijah was able to run ahead of the horse for, it says, the distance of a marathon, so that's about 26 miles. So obviously um, God was with Elijah in that and this was just another way God was showing Ahab that he was God, he was in control because he'd already been able to do um, the, the miracle where they sent the fire down and this was just another example of that and also the fact that he'd been able to control the rain as well all of that just pointed towards who God really was and so God was with Elijah and because God... Um, helped Elijah and because Elijah had a deep faith in God uh, God was able to do his will through him so let's just pray here before we finish Heavenly Father we thank you that we are able to meet once again albeit over the internet um, I just want to pray for each and every boy here Lord I just pray for them and for their families I just pray that you will keep them safe and I just pray for them as they are at home a bit now doing homeschooling and everything, Lord, that you would just uh, help them and guide them in all that they do. We thank you for Elijah and we thank you for his example that he trusted in you, Lord, even though everybody else was against him. He wasn't afraid to stand up for you. And Lord, may we uh, be like that. Uh, may we not be afraid to stand up for you even when other people go against you. Just be with us now and bring us back again in a couple of weeks. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Okay guys, so thanks very much for joining us again. So like I said earlier, uh, we're going to try and do one of these every two weeks, like before Christmas, to take us right up to Easter. Uh, hopefully then, you know, maybe getting into the summer, when hopefully things will get better and, and things get res less restricted, we'll maybe be able to meet up outside or something like that. But we're going to do this uh, between now and Easter every two weeks. So the next video you'll see then in two weeks' time, uh, which I think is the 19th, um, and you'll see that uh, at 7 o'clock it will appear on YouTube. Okay, but until then, have a have a good couple of weeks, take care of yourself, and we'll chat to you again soon. Bye-bye now.